Hey guys, so today I want to talk about running your Harvestrite freeze dryer off of solar power. Okay, and we'll start with a summary. Uh, just give you the basics, what you need to know real quick, and then I'll have the details of my actual experiment following if you want to watch that. So the summary is I did a batch of bananas. I think it was like 27 bananas. It took 32 hours to process. The total power used was 23 kilowatt hours. That's, that's quite a bit of power. Now, when the sun was shining from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., and it was over two days, I used 11 and a half kilowatt hours when the sun was shining. Then when the sun was down from 4 p.m. to 8 a.m., I also used 11 and a half kilowatt hours. So the reason I separated that is because, you know, obviously when the sun's shining, you can run off your panels, but when the sun goes down, you got to have a battery for that, or you got to be able to switch to utility. So let's take a look at the system requirements for your solar power system. The Harvestrite freeze dryer runs between, say, 30, 350 watts up to about 1400 watts when the heater's on. So I would say a 2000 watt inverter would do the job. That way you're not running at 100% duty cycle. Now on your array, 5000 watts would be plenty. Uh, you could probably do it with less than that if you hit your batteries a little bit more. 5000 watts would be good. On your battery bank, you're gonna need 12 kilowatt hours of usable battery space. So if it's flooded lead, flooded lead acid, you're gonna need at least double that. If it's lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate, then maybe a 15 kilowatt hour battery would be plenty. Or the other possibility is that you can have a way to switch it to the utility and back without interrupting the cycle. And that's what I did. I used some battery and some utility. So I'll show you exactly what I did. Uh, let's take a look at that. So let's take a look at this process. Across the bottom of this chart, you got the hours starting at zero, that was 8 a.m. And then you got kilowatt hours used. You can see the orange line just shows how the power progressed throughout the day. Now I broke it into sections. So the first section from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., that's when we are running on solar power, right? The sun's shining, the panels are powering the whole thing. We use 5.9 kilowatt hours during that time. Then at 4 p.m., the sun goes down. Uh, the battery kicks in and I run that till midnight and I drained 6.2 kilowatt hours out of my battery bank which I think with that coupled with what I was running in our house brought it, uh, my bank down to 70 percent and I didn't really want to take it lower than that so that's when I switched the system over to the utility so from midnight to 8 a.m. it's running on the utility and I burned five kilowatt hours. So that five kilowatt hours is the only power that I pay for here. Everything else is on the solar or the battery. At 8 a.m., sun comes up, switch it back to the solar and run another 5.7 kilowatt hours. All told, 22.78 kilowatt hours, where only five of it was on the utility. Okay, so I thought I'd start with a summary of the solar power system that I'm using. This is a DIY system that I built myself. Um, I'll put links in the description if you want more details, but basically I've got 8,500 watts on a roof mount here and another 4,500 watts on a ground mount back here for a total of around 13,000 watts on the collector. Um, it's going to be a bit cloudy day, so we'll be hitting the batteries quite a bit. See how that goes. Hopefully we'll get enough sun to keep this going. Inside, I've got the Magnum system. I've got two inverters. They're about 4,400 watts each. You know, roughly 9,000 watts continuous and double that peak. And for the battery bank, I've got 16 of the Trojan L16REs. It's flooded lead acid. It's about 740 amp hours at 48 volts. So I get about 15 to 20 kilowatt hours usable energy out of this. Although I usually only run it about nine kilowatt hours a night out of this. They're going into year six and they're still going strong. Uh, over here we got the Harvest Right freeze dryer. This is a medium. I've had this for about a year, I guess, or so. 
Um, I've got it plugged into a dedicated 20 amp circuit that can run off of solar or the utility. I'm going to put a kilowatt meter on here. We'll be able to look at the wattage, voltage, current, and the kilowatt hours used as we go through the day or days, however long it takes. Note that I'm only going to plug in the freeze dryer to the kilowatt meter, so we're getting just the freeze dryer. All this other stuff, lights, fans, whatever else I'm plugged in, or that'll be independent. So I just added this circuit. It's on this transfer switch right here, the F circuit freeze dryer. It's on a 20 amp breaker, and this allows me to go from solar to the utility. And if, I think if I switch that fast enough, the unit won't hiccup. Hopefully not. This is where it is on the utility, 20 amp circuit. So basically transfer switch gets power from the utility and from solar, and I can switch it back and forth. As long as I do it fast enough, hopefully that'll work. So the plan is to run it on solar all day. It's about 8 o'clock in the morning right now. And I'll probably run it a little bit into the battery. And at some point, we're going to switch that over. I'll wait till the freeze dryer is in a mode where it's pulling the less power. So the heaters are off and compressors are off. And that's when we'll switch it. And hopefully it'll just continue right on. And then tomorrow morning, we'll switch it back to the solar again until the cycle's done. So let's get started. OK, here we go. So we're starting at 0 watts. I'm going to turn the machine on. OK, so we're going to say start. And we're going to say pre-frozen. All right, so this guy is going to start to cool down. Okay, so I've got four trays of bananas cut up. They've been in the freezer for a couple of days, so they're frozen solid. And as soon as our machine is down to 32, we'll put these in. Okay, so this is the output of my solar power system. So this is for the whole house. I've got L1 and L2 up here. On L1, we're pulling 175 watts. And we started at 47 kilowatt hours this morning. And over on L2, we've got 561 watts, and we also have 47 kilowatt hours. Uh, the freeze dryer is on L2. Okay. Down here, we see our battery's at 79% charge, and we're currently putting four amps into the battery bank. So the sun's just coming up, trying to poke through the clouds. So we'll keep an eye on this as we go through the day. So the freeze dryer is cooling down to 32 degrees. It's currently at 69 degrees. And we can see over here that it's pulling about 390 watts. You know, that's basically the compressor. And we just got started, so we're at 0.04 kilowatt hours used. So it's about 8.30, still cloudy. Got lots of clouds out here. Hoping that sun's going to pop out pretty soon. Let's see where we're doing. The freeze dryer now, we're just hit 31 degrees, we're ready to start in here. Still pulling 300 watts. And so for that cycle, I'm gonna make a note of this, it used 0.16 kilowatt hours. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, open this up, put these in. Oh, that's cold. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close this up and then we'll start the next So I just cycle. close the drain valve, put the insulator in, close the door, and we're at 18 degrees and we're hitting continue. All right, there we go. You may note that it took 0.16 kilowatt hours to get this far. It's just the freeze cycle. And we're pulling 332 watts. Let's take a look over here. We got about two, three, four, five hundred watts coming in off the panel. We're dropping 40 amps out of the battery bank. We've dropped a 78 state of charge. The house is pulling about 2,500 watts. About 9 a.m., still no sun. At least it's cloudy, so no direct sun. Vacuum freezing. Started that phase, so our vacuum pump is running. Pulling 658 watts. See, we got about a thousand watts or so coming off the panel. Pulling about 2,000 watts in the house overall. Our batteries dropped to 
and we're still dropping 18 amps. Now one good thing about having the transfer switch is that if the, let's say the sun never comes out today, stays cloudy and the batteries drop too low, and while I won't have to end the cycle, I can hopefully throw this switch to utility. The question is, can I throw that switch fast enough that the freeze dryer won't uh, hiccup and drop out of the cycle? I'm sure it'll, it'll notice, but hopefully it'll stay in cycle and we'll keep right on going on utility. We're about 41 minutes in and it just switched to drying mode. Pulling 1287 watts. Pulled about a half kilowatt hour so far. So we're down to 75. We're really losing power now. Pulling 40 amps out of the battery and uh, and we're unbalanced. I don't like that. So we got 2,500 watts on one side and only 250 on the other, and that's because I got the freeze dryer and I'm running the dishwasher on this one right now. So, we need some sunshine. Okay, so it's about 10 o'clock and the sun is finally coming out. Still in the drying phase, it'll be here for a while. It's kind of going between, you know, 1330 watts when the when the uh, heater's on and about 300 or so watts when it's off. It's probably a thousand watt heater. You can see from the panels now we're pulling in six, seven thousand watts. So we're going up on the battery, up to 78, putting 60 amps into it and pulling about 3500 watts in the house. Plenty of power now. A quick update, it's almost noon. We got a lot of sun coming in now. Blue skies. Here we're still in the drying mode. Been running for about 3 hours and 12 minutes. Uh, plus the freeze time. Alright, we pulled 2.5 kilowatt hours. Still bouncing between 1300 and 300 depending on the heaters on. Here you can see pulling down about 10,000 watts on the panel, burning through about 7,000 watts in the house. We've used about 10 kilowatt hours so far today. Putting 40 amps into the battery bank and we're at 95% charged. So things are looking good. We'll probably just let this roll for until the sun goes down, then we'll check back in. So it's about 4 p.m. I've been running for about eight hours on solar. The main panel's in the shade, and the ground mount is going to be in the shade pretty soon. Still putting out, I think, about a thousand watts. Uh, let's see what we got going here. So we're still in the drying phase. Uh, same old thing. It's bouncing between about 1,300 watts and 577 here. 5.9 kilowatt hours. We'll probably do about six kilowatt hours before we go on to the batteries. So you can see panel one, panel two, and that's the ground mount is just under a thousand watts already. Over here in the house, this is the house total. I hope this doesn't confuse you. This is the whole house now, not just this, the freeze dryer. But uh, just so you, just so you know. All right, so we're putting in two amps. We're at a hundred percent charged. So I'll probably run it off the battery for a while, and then uh, then we'll do the switch over. It's 6 p.m. and it's getting dark. But we've been on the batteries for about two hours since about 4 p.m. Still drying. 13:30. And so that's about the only. I turned everything else in the house off, so the only thing on L2 is the freeze dryer, but I still have stuff running on L1 to balance it out a little bit. So we're already down to 95%. So it took two hours to get down to 95%. Well, we'll keep going. It's after midnight and 12 kilowatt hours. 
Battery's at 76%. So, time to try and switch this over. So the idea is, I'm gonna throw this switch from solar down to utility, try and do it quickly, and hope that this thing doesn't hiccup, because if it does, then it's gonna be a pain in the neck. So, It worked. <laughs> nice. Now it's on the utility. Cool. We'll switch it back in the morning. All right, guys. It's 7:45 a.m. and we're off to a better start this morning. We already got a lot of sun on the main panel. Uh, the ground mount is still in the shade, but it'll be in the sun pretty soon. Let's see what we got here. All right, so I'm on the final dry, and it would have already finished, but I added 10 hours. Uh, we probably won't do the whole extra 10 hours, but that'll just give us a place to work. We'll probably run till the sun goes down. All right, so we're at 17.15 kilowatt hours used, which means we put five kilowatt hours on the utility. So we were at 12 when I switched to the utility last night. All right. So you can see we've got a couple thousand watts coming in on the panel already. Already putting 33 amps in, 70% charge. So we're going to have to switch this back over to the sun. Okay. Now when I do this, let's look at the watts. Yes, yeah, so we're only pulling 500. If it were on 1300, I'd wait. I want to do it when it's on the lower amount, so it'd be easier to make the switch. So hopefully. This will work like it did yesterday. Here we go. Oops, the battery died, but that's okay. Bam! Okay. So it worked. Back on solar. Alright, so it's 8 a.m. We're getting some good sun here. Right from the start. Alright guys, it's about 4 p.m. and I'm starting to lose my sun on that ground mount panel. So we're going to go ahead and shut this down. Uh, ran for about 32 hours. Now I did add 9 extra hours to make sure it was thoroughly dry. And since it was in the sun running for free, you know, why not, right? Uh, ended up 22.65 kilowatt hours what it took for the whole process. Solar power held out great, worked just fine, and in particular this transfer switch is what allowed me to switch it over to the utility for a little while during the night so I wouldn't drain my batteries too much. So we ended up with about five kilowatt hours on the utility. And the rest is all on the solar or the batteries. So, I mean, uh, I think this definitely works out great. This is what we'll be doing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.